think of Sherlock Holmes as an iconic late Victorian figure, and well, we should. The fog, the deerstalker hat, 221B. And I'll be talking about that, especially in the early weeks of the course, when we'll look at the history surrounding Sherlock Holmes and his place in Victorian life. But as any of you who've been part of the BBC's new series, uh, Sherlock, know Sherlock has a long life, and hence the title of my course. There are over 50 films of Sherlock Holmes, endless adaptations. Sherlock Holmes has been pictured as a woman, a dog, everything you could think of. And we're going to explore Sherlock Holmes in pictorial representation, film, television, children's books, everywhere we can to try to answer the question, why are we so fascinated with this quintessentially Victorian figure? What does he say to us in the 21st century? And why did he endure throughout the 20th? I think that he's the most engaging figure. Uh, and Conan Doyle himself, the author of the original Sherlock Holmes stories, is a fascinating figure in his own right. He was a medical doctor, he believed in mesmerism, and we'll look at all those interesting facets of Conan Doyle who uh, I really love to talk about and think about. We may take a short departure to look at another iconic late Victorian figure, Sigmund Freud, who surprisingly has a relationship to Sherlock Holmes in that both Freud and Conan Doyle's character are really trying to detect or diagnose, but their methods, as it were, are quite different. And in a way, they initiate two different 20th century ways of thinking. One highly psychologized, that of course is Sigmund Freud, and the other really Holmes is not interested in psychology. He's interested in things like the little yellow button that reveals everything about the mystery, but he's not really interested in people's internal psychology. And I think that difference between Freud and the after long life of Sigmund Freud is fascinating when we think about the long life of Sherlock Holmes. So we'll take a brief foray into Freud as well. In all the different adaptations of Sherlock Holmes and the character of Sherlock Holmes, certain kinds of themes recur that I find really fascinating. One of them that stretches all the way from the original stories to the current BBC production is the woman who got away, you know, the woman who Sherlock Holmes could not capture, Irene Adler. The other, of course, is Holmes's arch enemy, Moriarty. And we'll be looking at how Moriarty changes gender, changes context, and why exactly are the stories so interested, both the original and the adaptation, in these iconic figures, Moriarty, Irene Adler, um, and also Holmes's kind of highly anti-emotional, in the, in the BBC series, he calls himself a functioning sociopath. What's the importance of that completely de-psychologized, uh, detecting self that Sherlock Holmes presents. I hope you'll join me for this course. I think it'll be interesting and exciting, and I also think it'll be a lot of fun and a great way to spend a hot summer's day in Tucson. So I look forward to seeing you.